what, it's, what can a movie do? I mean, basically, it examines a human condition and people living in a particular situation that I don't think that we've seen before. I mean, certainly not by an American director. And I actually uh, saw a test screening of this movie um, in New York City. And I was surprised when out of the 20 people from the focus group, out of 100 people, mm -hmm. unanimously, everyone said, well, we've never seen this side of the story. And why did you think that you were the right director to tell the other side of the story? Maybe nobody else wanted to do it. I mean, I select the movies that I want to make in a pretty intuitive way. There's no real reason. And if I told you the reason, it wouldn't mean anything either. Yeah. But uh, my sister, Andrea, is 11 and a half years older than me. And I started working on this movie, and she said to me, you know that uh, after the war, I wasn't born yet, I was born in 1951, she said, there used to be people that would come to our house and they'd be wearing mom's clothes, and they'd be around for a week and then they'd disappear. And then there'd be other people that were there. And so what my mother was doing was shuttling people from the camps to different uh, locations in the United States to help them find places to live. And um, she was very involved in uh, trying to build a Jewish state. In reading Rula's book, I, I guess there was something about him that reminded me of my mother. So did you then feel a responsibility to tell this story? Absolutely, yeah, I did. I mean, that's exactly what I just felt responsible. Uh, I re a responsibility to my mother also, hmm. uh, because uh, I'd like things to turn out good over there mm -hmm. for everybody. I think what's good for the Palestinians is actually is good for the Israelis and, and vice versa. But I think that, you know, it's about living together. I left Jerusalem in 1993. Hind Husseini, the woman that raised me and she created this orphanage, she looked at me and, you know, she said goodbye to me. I was in a cab and I was going to Europe to study. And she told me, don't forget the kids that you leave behind. And I thought about it many times. And I thought, well, what she wanted to say, because she knew that I was leaving and I might not come back. What she wanted me to say, what she wanted to say to me, and what she wanted me to remember is, to give a voice for these girls. She didn't want me to, re to forget about these kids. So I wrote this novel to honor these girls and to remember that Miral is not me anymore. It's the many girls that still live in the Middle East and they're hostage. And you know, their destiny is imposed on them. There's no freedom of choice. Uh, so your character in the film is very central. You play uh, a mother role, a teacher role to all of these girls. How did you really want to represent this character after reading the script? What was really important for me is just, again, just like to have her like soul live in my body and let my body talk for her. That was the most important thing. And just like being really truthful to her charisma and her, her strength and her belief in what she was doing to these, to these kids. We have children from every corner of Palestine. And every day there is more. My goal is to educate these kids and give them hope. The director, Julian, what was it like to work with him and what kind of director is he on set? Julian is a painter before he is a director and I think he's doing movies because he loves to do movies, but like he's not in a way a traditional classical director. He just like tries to search for himself something that surprises him. Are you the kind of author that really holds on how, how you want to see, you know, this film made? A collaboration is you put your talent and you let somebody else use that talent in their own way. Why do you uh, think it is important and powerful to shine a spotlight on this story of education uh, really being resilient in the face of conflict? How do you protect a child? I mean, what do you do? in this situation. I mean, even never mind in, uh, in Palestine or Israel. I mean, if you look in Afghanistan or Pakistan, Africa, different places, I mean, usually women and children usually get the, the brunt of the violence. And I really do feel like uh, the, the uh, civil society is held hostage by fanatics on both sides. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's no good violence and bad violence. There's no judgment about it. It's all bad violence. It's just curious and it's, it's interesting how do people respond in a prolonged state of conflict. Mm -hmm.